And we're back. All right. Hair looks weird. Oh. Sure. Yeah. Okay. So, um, yeah. So, uh, as I always end my show with, uh, it's now time for the Accidental Book Club. Uh, this week we are reading Sidfield's screenplay. Yay! Yay! Um, I didn't do nearly as much reading as I thought I would on my week off, so I'm actually going to extend this to a third week, uh, I think, because it's important and I actually want to finish it, and if I don't, I won't finish it. I'll just jump onto whatever uh, is new. Um, so yeah. Uh, Sidfield is, uh, like I said last time, uh, Sidfield, Sidfield is kind of, uh, the guy on writing screenplays. I do think his advice is a little old fashioned, but there is a lot of good things in here. Um, especially when it comes to, uh, well, the part I'm at right now is character. Um, and I think his approach to character is very good. Um, he, <laughs> he describes, uh, he describes a lot of uh, ways in which uh, character should interact with, with his backstory, uh, with uh, the dramatic need and the setting and, and all those things. Same as a lot of what I, I've been talking about uh, today. Um, so yeah, uh, Sidfield is really all about structure. Structure is very important to writing. Um, it, it helps us uh, so much in, in, in creating interesting stories. It's also one of those things that's kind of weird because structure is, is also... Um, structure is one of those things that makes movies predictable, but at the same time, movies that don't follow proper structure or good structure tend to be bad. Um, it, it's a weird, it's a weird uh, dilemma of this is how stories should be told and, and good stories are told this way and uh, trying to break the mold and maybe succeeding but really not because again that's how good stories are told regardless of the story it gets weird um, but yeah structure structure is important um, and we're going to be talking about structure super hard next week uh, when it comes to outlining um, so yeah. Oh, I totally forgot the thing. I totally forgot the thing. So, um, I will spend uh, a good few minutes now uh, talking about our short story, the one that we started last time, last episode. Uh, and how and what are the five elements of our short story? Uh, like, there are five main storytelling elements, right? So what are those in our short story? Um, practical stuff. Yay! Um, yeah. Archetypes versus ingenuity. Yeah, it's, it's a totally hard thing. Um, because you run the risk of being formulaic, but at the same time uh, it, not following the formula to a certain degree muddles up the story and makes it and, and makes it not effective. Um, the same can be said a lot about, about stereotypes and, and tropes. And uh, you've probably heard me talk about tropes a lot, but tropes are basically um, a, a, a commonality in the way that we tell stories. Um, so, <laughs> so uh, yay! Um, yeah. <laughs> Uh, so like a good trope, for example, is unobtainium, uh, that fictional metal that everyone's trying to get in the story, um, used in James Cameron's Avatar and, uh, a thousand other things. Um, but yeah, that's a trope and, and tropes are interesting because there are, there are forms and there are archetypes and how you use those tropes can make them either... Uh, can make them feel uh, can make them feel 
uh, bad or can make them feel good or um, that didn't describe anything. Uh, how you use the tropes can determine how uh, how tired your story sounds or or is in fact. Um, what's the, I'm thinking of a word and I can't remember what it is. Can't remember what it is. Uh, something about adages, tried and true. Ah, uh, damn it. It's something people use a lot in terms of uh, writing. I'm, oh, I'm having a day. I'm having a day. It's all the heat. It's just melting my brain. Uh... Ah, whatever. I'll come back to it. If I remember. Uh... Still can't remember what it is. That's bad. Anyway. Yeah, brain brain is totally melting. Uh right. What was the diamond? Right. Short story. Let's go back to the main screen here. So um for us we have four characters. At the moment, we have four characters. We have, uh, sorry, no, that's wrong. We have six characters, not four. Six characters, six characters. And I'm gonna open this up in a thing. Yeah, there we go. That synopsis open there. So elements of storytelling. Uh, so characters. Who are our characters? Well, give me a list. Why are you not listing? Hmm, weird. That's all. Anyway. Oh, there we go. Weird. So we have the siren. We have the fawn. We have the uh, ex-billionaire. We have the killer for hire. We have the goblins, the little characters. We have uh, the demon. We have the uh, the group who's summoning the demon, who we have not defined yet. So that's a thing. Uh, we have the king, who's off screen, but he owns stables that the billionaire used to run. Uh, so those are our characters. That's 
setting. <laughs> I need to fix that timer. But that's way too long. I need like a five second ban. <laughs> I feel bad now. So the setting that I think we should do is a subgenre of fantasy. I think we should do a um, a middle fantasy, almost a mythological sort of style. No, I didn't know that. I'll, I'll fix that. Don't worry. Uh, a mythological style. So I'm going to describe it as classical fantasy. Um, and this is the I'm def, I'm not defining the setting per se. I'm defining the genre that the setting is going to be in. Uh, so I'm going to write that down as genre. And I'm going to say it's classical fantasy. Um, so middle fantasy, mythological. So our setting is in a kingdom. We know that's a kingdom. We know that there's uh, a waterfall. We know it takes place in winter, which is a time, which is part of the setting. Um, we know that there's stables. Um, what else do we know? Um, um, sorry, just checking out my descriptors here, seeing what we have. Uh, I did not bring the mind map in here. I should definitely get a picture of the mind map for this. Mistakes were made. Mistakes were made. Uh, so we know that we have these locations. Um, we know that because we're doing classical fantasy, We know that because we're doing classical fantasy that this isn't going to be a vast, giant world in the way that Lord of the Rings was, for example. Um, <laughs> uh, this is going to be more of a enclosed style, in the same way that the Greek and Roman myths kind of are enclosed. They take place in, in, in one country and a few other surrounding areas, but it's, it's very enclosed. So, uh, for that we know that this is probably some sort of city-state or small country um, slash island sort of place. Um, if we were going to do a Greek, it would be very Mediterranean. I don't know if it's going to be exactly Mediterranean because we do have a winter going. So perhaps, uh, in, in, in a way to sort of make it more interesting for us, it can be more like Icelandic or uh, Scandinavian uh, mythological. Yeah, I'm totally going to just write Icelandian. That's perfect. Right, and I agree with you, Sam. I mean, those myths, those myths do take place thousands of years ago, and there's uh, intentional cultural stuff that's being... Um, yeah, I know they're distinct. I know Roman and Greek are distinct. 
I'm just saying, though, that they're very insular. That's what I'm saying. Um, cause, cause we were talking about this last time when I said classical fantasy, where, you know, uh, it's not medieval. There's not going to be castles and sword fights and all that in the same way. Um, it's going to be more spears and shields. It's going to be more, um, and, uh, and I'm doing this very loosely. We're going to make a more concrete setting in the future. Uh, but I, I just want to get some loose ideas down so that we have an idea, uh, so we have a good direction for when we're plotting. Um, uh, uh, swords and castles. Right? Yeah, and uh, when I think of Icelandic myths, I think of stuff like Beowulf, uh, for example. Uh, <laughs> the cool thing about Scrivener Drani is that I can actually control all of the colors. So I, uh, the default is not this, the default is something else. I preferred this for uh, many reasons, mostly just because it has a much higher contrast and it's easier to see on Twitch uh, with the black backgrounds. Um, but yeah, I, I, I did a, definitely did a test stream where there was magenta writing on a green background at one point. Um, so yeah. Beowulf is Denmark? Really? I knew it was Old English. Anglo-Saxon. Oh yeah, he's the king of the Danes. Right, of course. My bad. But that's still kind of, well, it's not as Icelandic, but it is Scandinavian. Uh, so it, it definitely... F <laughs> I know, I'm so bad at geography. Like, I'm really bad at it. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It's Icelandian. It's Icelandian. Um, and I agree, Johnny. It is super relaxing uh, to look at. I much prefer black backgrounds. It's also more energy efficient. Uh, so if you have like a tablet or something uh, to have a back background, uh, it takes less light to, to eliminate uh, black than it does white. So you can actually save a lot of energy <laughs> or a lot of battery power by doing that. So I think, I think we have a good foundation there. Um, I need to, to get a little bit more concrete with it in the, in the coming weeks, but we will. We'll totally do that. We'll come back and we'll, we'll take a look at this stuff later uh, or relook at it. Um, yeah, I think, I think my chat delay is, is big again. <laughs> um, Yeah. And I know, um, interesting side note, uh, J.R.L. Tolkien, the guy who wrote, wrote Lord of the Rings, was hugely into the Icelandic Eddas. Um, and sort of that style of, of uh, writing epics. Um, and this story, this short story we're working on, is not going to be an epic. Uh, that's kind of why I wanted to go more of a, a middle fantasy. High fantasy tends to be written as an epic. Um, an epic being a, um, a certain type of heroic, uh, of, of hero's journey story, uh, usually involving uh, lots of different countries, wars, battles, and, and uh, vast amounts of geography and traveling and... Uh, and epic adventures. And I agree, Tolkien was a dingus, but he was a good dingus. So yeah, um, that's what we got for setting. Note to self, remember to do the whole scrolly thing, because people can't read when it's behind your face. So conflict, 
What conflicts do we have here? Yeah, there we go. Got to work first time this time. So what conflicts do we have here? Obviously, the siren wants to stop. The ritual, right? That's a conflict. The killer for hire wants to kill the siren. Um, the goblin raiders are searching for the feather. Right? Um, the billionaire lost his fortune. So these are conflicts. These are the, the main conflicts that are kind of coming out at me right now. I suspect there's going to be a few more, um, mostly because there are characters, like, like I said, who, who haven't really come into play yet. Um, and we'll, we'll, once we further design, uh, define the characters' relationships, we'll be able to pull more conflicts out from in, inside those. Um, what feather? The Siren's Feather. The Magic Feather. It's going to be magic feather. It's important to the ritual. I have a whole backstory plan. Don't worry. Don't you worry. And theme. There. Separate just a little bit. Cool. Theme. Um. Well, uh, I'm not quite sure what the themes are going to be for this yet. Uh, I do know one of the central themes that we're doing right now is we're doing a, a Faustian style story. So we're going to say Faustian Fall. Uh, Faust being a very f famous old story uh, about, a, uh, about a man who makes a deal with a demon uh, and is uh, forever punished for it. Uh, Chris, my, I'm going to be wrong about this, Sam. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Uh, Faust is a German story. Oh, the link's in there. Um, it was a German story, but uh, the main literary adaptation of it was Christo Christopher Marlowe, if I'm not mistaken. But I'm probably mistaken because I'm obviously awful today and my brain has melted. Okay, so I got the first part right. Classic German legend. All right, points in my favor. Um, the story was popularized in England by Christopher Marlowe. Yes, yes. Victory. Yeah, and then it was reworked by uh, Gozzi. I don't know how to pronounce that. I'm going to sell it wrong. But yes. We got there. We got there. Anyway, there's going to be a Faustian style fall. Uh, with our with our uh, 
with our uh, our billionaire. So uh, implied themes because of that are uh, greed is bad. Uh, I don't know. That's kind of lame, but it, it is a thing. Uh. Like, greed is bad. I think there's going to be some redemption themes. I'm kind of playing with some interesting stuff for the siren uh, right now in my head. I, I took an entire summer of German. I'm not useless. I pronounced Wagner right. Whatever, whatever, it's fine. <laughs> um, redemption, redemption, blah, blah, blah. And um, protection of the innocence, I think, something like that. These are very broad. I'd like to make them more, con uh, more uh, concrete eventually, uh, and we will. Like I said, we're gonna, we're gonna re <laughs> redo this. Uh, uh, we're going to redo this uh, in two weeks, probably, maybe three weeks, give or take, but yeah, yeah, so anyway, uh, I'm going to open up the, f uh, I just wanted to give kind of uh, a more working example of those five elements that I was talking about, uh, so we can kind of see them in action and how they're going to inform our story, um, oh, and, and point of view, I actually think that there's going to be several point of views, uh, several characters' point of views in this. I haven't decided what uh, what perspective we're doing, like what person we're doing, first, second, or third. Well, we're not going to be doing second. Uh, but uh, I think some of the story is going to be told from the siren's perspective, and I think some of the story is going to be told from the killer for hire's perspective. Uh, but I don't know how that's going to go yet. Uh, we're going to make more, again, we're going to make more informed decisions as we plot it out and see how it goes. So yeah, uh, quick Q&A session. Anyone have any questions for me? Uh, be happy to answer them. Uh, other than that, uh, I will see you all next week. Uh, we're going to be doing outlining. Um, and I will be doing rapid updates to the website and my Twitter hand feed and the Twitch channel and all that with, with logos and art and cool ass things. So, yeah. Any questions, guys? Here. You can tweet them at me later if you want. No questions in the chat. So I'm going to call it a night. It's been two and a half hours, which is about where I want it to be. So perfect. Um, yeah. Th thanks, for, uh, thanks for hanging out with me. <laughs> Bye.